I'm Jake Bruton, and last week on The Build Show, we talked about our standing seam metal roof. This week, we're gonna talk about our EPDM porch roof. So we will call the porch roof, and I called it porch roof in the intro, it's porch roof and dining room, so technically I'm over top of the dining room now. Uh, a flat or semi-flat, you know, in that 112 or, or flat uh, install. And there are two kinds of roofing, just like we talked about last week with the metal, there's two different choices. We have two main choices for uh, this flat membrane roof as well. We have EPDM, which is what we have here, or we have TPO. So let's talk real quick about TPO and why we choose not to use it. So it is a thermoplastic polyolefin. I believe I have that correct. Uh, you can get it in the United States in white or gray or tan. I don't think I've ever seen it in black. I'm not sure if they even make it in black. I'm not terribly experienced with it. I know it can be a good product. I also know that it is uh, a little more challenging to work with and just not as durable. So it's been in the market, TPO has been for probably 20 years, maybe 25 years max. Uh, and it's a 15 to 20 year roof, which if you're comparing to shingle roofs, that that's exactly what a shingle roof is, is 15 to 20 years. Uh, sometimes in our market it's a 10 year thing because of hail, but it is a, you know, 10 year or 15 or 20 year roof. So we also can talk about EPDM, and that is ethylene propylene diene monomer. Yes, there we go. I got it all. Uh, it's rubber or synthetic rubber. Uh, uh, for a long time, you could get synthetic rubber roofs in the United States uh, that are that literally say Goodyear or Firestone on them. That's how much that market is controlled by those enormous companies. Uh, so this is from ABC Supply. It is Mule Hide brand. It is basically the same as any other uh, quality EPDM roofing. Uh, the biggest thing for us, the reason to go EPDM over TPO. Uh, there's a little more durability, but the biggest thing is our installer. So when it comes to the installation methods, you want the person warrantying the work to be comfortable with what they're doing. And our installer does a lot of EPDM roofing. Uh, this was done by Beaverson Roofing in Moberly, Missouri. They travel uh, almost an hour to come and work with us. Uh, we trust them. I probably would not have an EPDM roof here if I didn't trust my installer that well. I probably would have pushed for this to have a little more slope and been done in standing seam metal if I didn't trust my EPDM installer. In fact, for a long time, I didn't do any sort of flat roof because I knew that it could be uh, it could be an issue. And the only roofers that we worked with in our market did like torch down asphaltic roofs that like, that's just, it's not a durable product. It's not a long-term solution. Uh, so once we found these guys, we were really pleased. So uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about how you can identify a quality install. First is if everything is tight, if everything is snug, if it doesn't have wrinkles in it, that's like your first idea that they know what they're doing, that they did a good job, that they paid attention. And if you really want to check that, uh, we're kind of overcast today, but we have a, a higher roof, so we have a shadow and sun sometimes. If both those are, are still taut, if they're both still flat, then that's like the, the best install that we can hope for is wrinkle free. Uh, you want everything to drain and wrinkles cause things to not be able to drain. Let's talk about a couple other details that I really like that this contractor does for us. So they turn up the wall. Uh, most of the time it's 16 to 18 inches. Uh, this is just an agreed upon, yeah, see we're 17 and a half there. This is just an agreed upon height that even though my siding is gonna come down and there will be some nails through this, that membrane comes up far enough that I'm not worried about it. We have worked with some contractors before that wanted to turn it up like an inch and a half or two inches and it just doesn't seem like it's enough to really be waterproof. You have to remember this is a flat surface, things are gonna wanna splash on it. The other thing that I absolutely love about what they do, we framed perfectly flat, they sloped with foam and then they tack that foam in place and then the EPDM roof lays over top of it. So they put one solid piece from where you saw on the wall out and over the edge of the roof 
and you can actually see it on the back side of the uh, roof edge here. Meaning, anything that hits this still has to wind up out on my fascia or in the gutter. And what they've done is they come back in and put in their metal uh, drip edge and then they glue a basically a seam patch over top of it. So now all my water still has to get to the roof edge and out or into the gutter. But if they have an error between this patch and this original EPDM, the lower level, it still all feeds to the outside. And as long as I get my gutter installed in the proper location out here, any water that hits this roof has to find its way out there. And it's a very important thing to consider where the water's going, but it's a lot more important when you're low pitch. So if I have an 812 roof, that roof is probably gonna shed water even once the shingles are starting to age and have problems. If I have a less than 112, you know, flat and sloped with foam, this thing is gonna have water that doesn't run off it very quick. So if it has a problem, it's gonna find that and cause problems. So we have to pay really close attention. Our, we have to step up our game. So I think of this as the same as we're building a house without overhangs or something. Risk, risk and solutions have to be balanced to make sure that we don't have issues. Find a good subcontractor and they will make you make you better and they will make you uh, or they will give you opportunities to do things that you didn't used to do. So like I said, we didn't do EPDM roofs very often before we started working with these guys. They're fantastic and I know I can trust them and I know that they're going to get it right every time to the point that I even had them do some EPDM roofs at my house that cover some interior and porch spaces just like this one. So uh, EPDM over TPO, it's my choice. It's my installer, but I also think that the EPDM being a 25 to 30 year roof or longer uh, is better than putting on a 15 to 20 year TPO roof. The only other option for EPDM as well that uh, I've never done but I've repaired is ballasted roofs. So sometimes you'll see gravel basically on a roof. It's an EPDM underneath and then they cover it with rock. Uh, it can be a very good solution. It's just uh, sealed around the perimeter then and loose laid in the middle. Uh, it gives the roof a little bit more expansion and contraction. They're not very popular anymore. Most people just go to an EPDM. You can get a uh, mat that sits on top of this, so you could turn if the framing and everything were supporting. You can turn this into outdoor space. We've done that a couple times with these guys. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to sit on the roof. I'd rather sit in the shade if I'm going to be outside. So. Let's just leave the roof to do its roofing job and, and maybe not turn it into a porch as well. Uh, so one last time, EPDM over TPO. The correct uh, subcontractors are going to up your game and have some standards worked out with those, those crews that you know you can trust. Like a little higher up the wall than what the manufacturer calls for, feeding everything uh, on the uh, roof edge size, side appropriately can really make a project shine and make you better. So thanks for watching The Build Show. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. Every Friday morning, Mr. Reisinger sends out a uh, email letting you know what we all posted this week. There's always great content. I learn from those guys every week. I'm happy to be involved. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And thanks for watching The Build Show.